What is up guys, I'm Francis the Instructor back here with TDS TV and I'm here at Croydon Driving Test Centre to give you guys a walkthrough talk through of a driving test. I'm gonna walk you through and talk you through all the things that you need to look at, do, say, hear and smell so that you can pass your driving test first time. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, so at the beginning of your driving test, the examiner is going to ask to check your driving license and they're going to ask you if your name and address is still correct. If it's not, it's not a big deal, it's not a big problem. Then the examiner is going to walk you outside, they're going to ask you to read a number plate. That shouldn't be too difficult, you should have done that with your instructor already, you should know that your eyes are cool. Next, they're going to ask you to sit in the car and ask you a vehicle safety question. This should be fine, you should have revised this already, they're not difficult. If you haven't seen that yet, click here and watch them now. Once that's all out of the way, the examiner is either gonna set up a sat nav or ask you to follow road signs and that'll be the start of your driving test. So on this driving test that we're gonna do, the sat nav part comes at the very beginning. It's gonna be 20 minutes of independent driving. So let's crack on. So Francis, when it's safe to do so, drive on and turn left out of the car park, please. Okay. It's unlikely your examiner will sound like that. So here, Croydon Driving Test Centre, it's really hard to see the pavement. So as you emerge from the test centre, be very careful. The road is busy, do not rush. This is the beginning of your driving test. Turn the sat nav's right. asking then me to turn right. You've reached your destination on your right. All right, so I'm gonna turn right. The beginning of your driving test, you need to be driving super cautiously because you might feel a little bit nervous. When you're nervous for the first five minutes, take it nice and easy, go really, really cautiously. And the thing you need to do most is plan ahead and anticipate. If you're planning ahead properly and anticipating far enough down the road, remember all that is is asking you what to do next turn left. and what's coming up. At the end of the road, turn left. Got it. All anticipation turn and planning left. is, is then what am I doing next road, and what's happening next. Left. So let's start that now. What's happening next? Bank of cars, very narrow road. What if a car comes towards me? What am I doing Turn next? Left. Turning left, left at the end of the road. The Mirrors, signal, position, speed. What's next? Okay, busy road, very busy. I might have had a little gap there, but because it's my driving test and it's right at the beginning, I'm not gonna take any risks, any chances. I'm not gonna fail for rushing. That's definitely not going to happen. You don't have to. After 200 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the second exit. Roger. You don't have to rush your driving test. You should be aiming for smooth go and safe and not quick. And take the second exit. Okay, second exit on the roundabout. This is the infamous Lombard roundabout. If you do your driving lessons over here, you know about Lombard roundabout. You've spent time here. You've practiced this over and over again because it can be very busy, very difficult. I'm not going to get too close to the van in front because it doesn't get me there any quicker. It puts more pressure on me and I want to be relaxed as possible for my driving test. So, take a deep breath. Whatever's happening ahead, you've done enough practice to be able to deal with this effectively. Lombard roundabout, we've done this a hundred times. It doesn't need to be difficult. We just need to wait for a gap and listen. You'd rather get a couple of minors for hesitation on your driving test than fail for going when it wasn't appropriate. Okay, first exit on my left, signal and leave. Notice how many times I check the mirror? You can't over check the mirror. Okay, speed limit on this road is 30 miles an hour. Speed limit in the whole area is 30 miles an hour. So I'm taking this road nice and easy. I'm at 31 miles an hour. I'm bringing that straight back down to 30. I noticed I was at 31, so I brought it back down again. I'm not panicking. Am I gonna fail for going 31 miles an hour? Definitely not, definitely not. So I get this question quite a lot. What happens if I go to 31? <gasps> Chill, relax, it's fine. Like, you can drive. 31 miles an hour, is that the end of the world? Of course it's not. The examiners aren't robots. They can see whether you are safe on the road or not. And going at 31 miles an hour is not gonna make you fail your driving test. If you go at 55 miles an hour in a 30 zone, that will make you fail your driving test. Okay, I'm keeping the crossing clear. Why? Because we can't stop on pedestrian crossings. That is unsafe. Now I can see ahead, I'm looking. Can you guys see that? 
ahead past yards, turn right. I'll come back to that one in a minute that's a misleading instruction I'm looking past the hot point van in front trying to get into the left lane why because we always drive in the left that's a that's an important one I'm looking past the hot point van to see what's happening ahead so that I know whether the traffic's speeding up or slowing down and I can see ahead that they're maintaining speed. So I'm gonna do the same, I'm maintaining speed. Always anticipating, always planning ahead. By the end of your driving test, you should be so tired from concentrating that you have no more to give. It should be like, Right. It should be like running a marathon. If you've still got energy at the end, you did not take it seriously. Same with your driving test. It's only 30, 40 minutes of actual driving, but by the end, you should be pretty whacked out. So here we go. Here's the misleading instruction. 170 yards is asking me to turn right. What I'm gonna do, because I know the area, is keep to the left and out of the Bare left right. lane. Bear right, okay. So remember, we always need to drive on the left. The road markings indicate that that's not a turn. Speed limit's gone up to 40 miles an hour. Still looking at the road markings. There's a new lane on the left and I'm gonna move into it. Did you notice that it said bear right, but there was a small change in direction, a road off to my left and this road was continuing. So I didn't need to change lanes. I didn't need to move to the right. That would have been inappropriate because then I'm driving in the overtaking lane. So remember to listen out for the sat nav. It's giving you misleading information at times. So make sure that you're looking as well as thinking what's on the sat nav. Sat nav might tell me one thing, the road might tell me another thing. Who's gonna win in a fight? The road because the sat nav is just a computer analyzing a map and giving you what it thinks is the best course of action, which is quite often incorrect. So take the sat nav with a pinch of salt and remember on your driving test, if you're not sure, ask. Especially about directions, the examiners can help you with directions. So ask, ask and ask again. Do not feel like you're asking a stupid question. What's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is your examiner will say, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. What do you think? Or something like that. So don't worry about asking questions. Planning ahead far enough in advance that I've spotted the hazard. Had a little blind spot check there as well. Why? Because there was a car in my blind spot. When you're using a road with multiple lanes, more than two, there could be something in your blind spot moving from the third to second lane when you're moving from the first to second. And take the second exit. All right cross the roundabout second exit on paper that doesn't sound too difficult this roundabout's massive so to go ahead at the roundabout i'm going to use the left lane why because it's easier do i need to indicate cross the roundabout and take the second exit on the sat nav crossing the roundabout looks like it's straight ahead the sat nav's not always going to tell you left right or straight i got a minor there did you see what happened <laughs> Exit, then cross the roundabout and take the second okay, exit. Okay, on Francis's driving test, he's currently scored one cross minor. The roundabout and take the second exit, then take the third right. Okay, so on this roundabout, again the sat nav said cross the roundabout. That on the screen looks like a right turn, and on the road it also looks like a right turn. So I indicated right for that one. If you caught the minor that I got on the first roundabout, comment below. Let me know what I got. After 100 yards, turn right. Okay, 100 yards, turn right. That's nice and easy. I can see turn there's right. a right turn. I can see the road layout on the sat nav, and this is my turning. Checking the mirror a couple of times, making sure there's no motorbikes, cyclists, or any other road users overtaking me at the same time as me turning right. And around this point, the examiner is quite likely to say, find a safe place to pull up on the left. So, here's a nice safe place. Remember what a safe place means. It means a legal parking space where you would normally park your car, get out, go to someone's house, or go shopping, or do something. You're gonna get out of your car and park it properly. So, this is a legal parking space. It's a parking bay, there's no red lines, no yellow lines, and no dropped curbs. That's an important one that people forget. So, why have they asked me to park here? But it's because it's on a hill and it's harder to pull away on a hill. The road's not too busy at the moment though. Prepare, observe, signal, handbrake, and I'm off. Speed limit on this road. Very common mistake is to speed up and go mental speeds. Watch there, 20, did you spot that? 
whenever I do mock tests in this area, nine times out of 10, someone fails for going too fast on this road. I'm in third gear. What third gear does is it gives you better fuel efficiency at 20 miles an hour. What it also does though, is it encourages you and makes it very, very easy to go over the speed limit. After 200 yards, go right on the roundabout and take the third exit, then take the second left. So if you're on your driving test, I would probably recommend staying in second gear for a 20 mile an hour speed limit and only going up to third Go gear right on the if you're on a 30. Take the third exit. Okay. Then take the second left. Now this roundabout's nice and simple. Looking to my right, is it clear? Yes. Because I'm turning right, hugging the inside. I'm not rushing. Definitely not going to rush a roundabout on my driving test. I want the steering to be smooth. I want the examiner to feel like I'm in control. 30 miles an hour speed limit on this road, but am I going to go 30 miles an hour? Yards, turn left. Definitely not appropriate for this road. It's very residential, it's quite narrow. So I'm going to reduce my speed to around, I'm doing 24 miles an hour, so that feels good. Turning left next. Turn left. No problemo. Remember, your examiner doesn't know you. They don't know how well you drive. Your driving instructor might let a couple of bits and pieces go because they know your ability, they know how capable you are. So if they see you getting a bit close to a parked car or going a bit fast around the roundabout, they might let you do it or they might let it go. But your examiner doesn't know you, they don't know how well you drive and they only get a half hour snapshot of your driving. Make that half hour snapshot the best snapshot that they can possibly get. Go around roundabouts at an appropriate speed so that they feel smooth and safe. Super important to make your examiner feel safe. Imagine, I don't know, an elderly relative, your nan, sitting in the passenger seat. Would you wanna be speeding around like Croydon driving test area is a racetrack. Definitely not. Your nan would start having words. So your examiner is exactly the same. Make them feel safe. Make them feel like you're in control. Make them feel like they don't have to have one hand ready to reach out and stop you from doing something mental. The way I'm driving right now down this road, it's smooth, it's calm, my speed is appropriate and the examiner, if there was one next to me, would be feeling After relaxed. After 200 yards, bear right, then go straight on. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna say, Francis, pull up on the left in a safe place. No problem, Mr. Examiner, let's do it. And handbrake neutral. What are they gonna ask me to do next? Francis, this is your manoeuvre. What I'd like you to do is move off from here and reverse part back into this position, keeping reasonably close to the kerb. I'd also like you to finish two car lengths from the car in front. Woo, okay, so my examiner's just asked me to do some parallel parking. What I'm gonna do first is move away from this Nissan. I'm too close to it. Now, if this is your manoeuvre, what you'd rather do right now is just stop, think, and take a second to work out all of your reference points. Parallel parking is very involved and there's a lot to do, there's a lot that can go wrong. So, what I want you to do if you're on your driving test is not rush it. What I want you to do is take it super slowly. What the examiner said to you was when you're ready. If you're not ready, that means chill for a second and make yourself ready. There we go. Keeping up that good observation. Now there's 101 ways to do this parallel parking maneuver. Your instructor might have told you another way. What you saw me do was my way, how I teach people. But if your way works, don't worry about my way, just do your way. They're not looking at how you do it. What they're looking at is your observation and your control. That's two things. Get your instructor to show you a marking sheet. In fact, here's a marking sheet, boom. What they're looking for on the manoeuvre section is control and observation. That's the only two boxes that are on there, control and observation. So if you're in control and you're observing correctly and you get from A to B, from out of the car to parked, you're gonna be fine. Here's another misleading information from the sat now. Bear right, yeah, obviously. The road tells me to, to go that way. Why are you telling me to bear right? See, because the sat nav is just 
a computer analyzing a map and it's got that one wrong. So it's telling me to go straight on here. I can see a giveaway line. There's a definite left and a definite right. So I'm indicating there's two very close examples of where the sat nav could have messed up your whole driving test by giving you misleading information. So make sure that you're listening to the information and also transposing what you hear and see on the map to what's ahead of you. Okay, priority sign ahead. This one's important. I've got priority. I'm not gonna be hesitant. I'm gonna prove that I understand the sign. Thank you. Let's talk about hand signals. Turn right, then you have reached your destination. Thanks. Hand signals are perfect. All you can do is say thanks. Do that if you want to. If you're confident enough to say thanks to people, great. It makes you look professional, but it's not necessary. The examiner will say thanks to people for you. Any other hand Turn signals right, are you have reached your inappropriate. Right, so mirror, signal, positioning, speed and chill. Here's a right turn. This one is easy to go wrong. If you haven't learned about crossroads yet or crossroads at traffic lights, make sure you practice this. Practice it a lot because crossroads at traffic lights can be confusing, scary, daunting. There's a lot that can go wrong and we don't want it to go wrong on your driving test. So make sure that you practice it and you feel confident with where to position yourself and what you are doing on a big busy crossroad. Thank you. That guy's waiting because he didn't want to block the junction. So I'm going to take that spot without hesitation. So in a sec, the sat nav is going to, because I'm checking my mirror so much, I can see an emergency vehicle coming up on my right hand side. So I'm going to start to take evasive action if I can. And help them out. If you get caught up by an emergency vehicle on your driving test, firstly, don't panic. That's the worst thing you can do. Secondly, try and get out of their way. But that doesn't mean stop straight away because what you might be doing by stopping straight away is blocking the cars behind. And then the 10 cars behind you are also blocking the police car, the ambulance, the fire engine. So find a good place to get over. There's no hard and fast rule of what's a good place or what you should and shouldn't do, but try and think outside the box. Think about what you're doing and your impact on other people. Think about how the police car is going to get around and what your position is doing to other road After users. After 200 yards, you have reached your destination. Great. So. At this point, the examiner is going to say, right, Francis, that's the end of independent driving. I'm going to direct you from here, which means sat nav's gone and I'm taking verbal instructions. When the examiner is verbally instructing you, they will tell you things like turn left, turn right, pull over on the left, do something at a roundabout, etc. They will not tell you if you're coming up to a very simple junction to go straight ahead. That's one thing that they will miss because they want you to spot junctions, they want you to be reacting properly for junctions, and they want, let's go back to the left here, they want you to be able to react to junctions quickly and deal with them effectively. So we're in a bit of traffic here. If you get this on your driving test, the examiner might ask you some awkward icebreaker questions. I'm not sure if they do this in driving examiner training or what, but if you get stuck at traffic lights or in a bit of traffic, they'll ask you the icebreaker questions <laughs> and they're always the same ones. And it's like, they really, really, really don't care about the answer. It's just they're asking you for conversation or so it's not awkward or so that you feel a bit less nervous. When you feel nervous, it's so good and so useful to talk to the examiner. When they start talking to you, instantly you feel like, ah, oh, okay, they're just a normal person and they're just like a dude that I'm talking to or a, a girl that I'm talking to and they're not scary which is great. So the icebreaker questions are great for that. And the common ones that I see all the time are, if you weren't here today, what would you be doing with yourself? Like, what do you do for work or study or what, what, what's your Saturday morning usually look like? The other one, um, have you come far for this? And it's so awkward. It's a bit like when you go into a bar and you're like, oh, do you come here often? Oh, cringe. Anyway, so they're the icebreaker questions. And what I would recommend for you, which I tell my students, is have your own icebreaker questions. Have something that you can ask the examiner. Why? Just for conversation so that they feel more relaxed and you feel more relaxed and everyone's having a better time in the car. 
Sometimes the driving test can be a little bit silent and a little bit awkward, especially when you're used to being with your driving instructor and you probably talk a lot on driving lessons. I know I talk a lot on driving lessons. We have loads of chats. So when we do mock tests, I make a massive point of there's no conversation, it's just you concentrating. Concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. Don't talk to me. I don't want to know about football. I don't want to know about your weekend. Just focus on your driving test. So it kind of helps for when you do your real driving test because nine times out of 10, the examiners don't really talk to you. And it can be a little bit weird and a little bit awkward, but it's the... It's the way that they're trained and it's what they're supposed to do. So have your own icebreaker questions. So if you feel awkward and you feel like, ah, I'm on a driving test, scary. A couple of good ones are, mm, so have you done many tests today or how, were the, how was the last test? They can't tell you how the last test was, but it's just a good way of like breaking the ice and saying, what's up, how's your day? Actually, I saw the Jumanji movie last weekend. It was really good. I'm thinking about it now. I want to talk about it. Later on, when I have a student in the car, I'm going to be talking about it. But if I was on a driving test, maybe just because it's something fresh in my mind, I'd say, hey, do you know what I did last weekend? What did, how was your weekend? Do you know what I did last weekend? I saw Jumanji. It was really good. This and that happened. Dwayne Johnson, really good. So, yeah, if you get stuck in traffic, especially like this, then it's good idea to have a question or two ready. Even if you don't use it, just have it ready. Have it in your arsenal. Have it in your bag that you can pull it out and use it. All right, top tip for if you're behind a big massive lorry like this, it's really hard to see past it. Really, really hard to see past it. The top, top, the most important thing you can do is stay as far back as possible. Don't try and get close to it because it's gonna give you, I don't know, five seconds on your destination. Try and stay as far back as possible. Don't rush because what that does is it lets you see more around the van or lorry. Okay, so let's have a look at what happens when we get too close to the lorry. If I put my hand here, how much can you see around my hand? If I put my hand here, how much can you see around it now? The further back I am from anything, the more that you can see around it. So how can you plan and anticipate ahead when you're bumper to bumper with a massive lorry? You can't, it's really difficult. So you need to pull yourself back. Don't let yourself get too close so that you can still see what's around you and what's happening. Make sure that you're not following things too closely because that gives you also more pressure than is necessary. If you're under pressure, how are you gonna perform? Yep, think about it. So we don't wanna to get too close to anything. Let's say at this point, the examiner is gonna ask me a show me question. Show me, when it's safe to do so, how you'd demiss your front windscreen. Okay, boom, on, off, keep driving. Super simple, learn them for your car, which is why it's a really good idea not to go in a random car. If you're practicing with your friends or family, take that car. If you're practicing with your instructor, take that car. Take the car you're most familiar with so that when the examiner says, when it's safe to do so, turn on your dipped headlights. Okay, I know how to do that really quickly without thinking too much. There has been a little bit of traffic on this route today and people say, <laughs> Sometimes, oh, I'd love to get stuck in traffic on my driving test. Actually, you wouldn't. You wouldn't because it puts you under more pressure. It puts you under more strain and you've got to think more when you're in traffic. It's stop, start. You don't want to get too close. You don't want to be too far back. You want to be keeping up with the vehicle in front. If you're behind a lorry like this, you can't see so much. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move around the lorry because we want to see a lot more. It's not advisable to come out of the left lane unless you're turning right or overtaking, but Sitting behind that lorry was getting a little bit frustrating. So remember, if you're overtaking stuff, which I am right now, it's okay to use the right lane, but move back to the left as soon as you're done overtaking, just like that. Another reason why it's not a great idea to sit in traffic is it just extends your driving test. Your driving test is a route. The examiner is not making it up as they go along. There is a pre-programmed route in the sat-nav the rest of the route is also pre-programmed, but in the examiner's head. Even if you're following road signs, the examiner's not making it up. That route is predetermined and it's there and set before you even start sitting down in the car. So if you sit in traffic for ages, it just makes your test longer. It's a really good idea to pick times of day when there's less traffic. So let's say you're in Croydon, there's always traffic. But if you're in somewhere like Morden or somewhere a bit less town centrey like Croydon, a good time of day would be like not nine o'clock because work traffic, school traffic, rush hour, all that kind of good stuff. 
Also, if you're in an area highly populated by schools, like Morden, it's also not a good idea to pick three o'clock because what's gonna happen at three o'clock? People are gonna come out and pick their kids from school and it's gonna get busy again. So 11, 12, one o'clock are good times of day. But let's face it, turn right third exit, People pass their test at all times of day. If you're good enough at driving, it doesn't matter what time of day you pick to pass your driving test, you're going to be fine. So, being confident on this roundabout, I'm not hesitating. I can see there's a nice gap, Lombard roundabout, acing it again. If you practice as much as I have done, or if you practice as much as you should do, you will ace Lombard roundabout is not something to be scared of, it's something to relish. It's an opportunity to show how good you are at driving. All right, Francis, drive into the test center on your right. Let's do that now. Right. And pull up into one of the bays on your left. Great, at this point, the examiner is gonna start marking and give you your driving test score. So that is the end of your Croydon driving test and Francis, I'm pleased to tell you that you've passed with one minor. Remember, if you spotted the minor, comment below. I'll read through all the comments. I'll be commenting back with you guys. And practice, practice, practice. There's no substitute for practice. Make sure that you're driving around Croydon as much as possible if this is where you're doing your driving test. But use these videos also if you can't get in the car all the time. If you're in between your driving lessons and you wanna still be looking at driving test routes, listening to tips, listening to hints and advice, cool, watch the videos, but remember to keep practicing. Don't be nervous for your driving test. If I made it look that easy, you can too. All you need to do is practice and be confident. I'm a confident driver, so I drive around confidently. Don't be nervous. Remember, it's your driving test. You've worked super hard for it and you deserve it. If you've worked hard, you deserve it. All you've gotta do is be confident, calm and perform on the day. Give the examiner that half hour snapshot of your driving and make it good. Guys, I'm Francis the Instructor. Follow me on Instagram at Francis the Instructor. Follow us at tds.tv and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Oh.